Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Corey and I am the host of this year podcast. Hey, we're doing something uh, really cool today. Um, we're actually we're going to bring in for the rest of the year. We're going to bring in some special uh, some, some special co-hosts, and today's our first addition to that special co-host. Um, so uh, our co-host today is Krista Bartik. Um, definitely give her a follow on Color by Chris. That's K R I S S. I always mess that up because I always want to put a Y on it, but it's a uh, it's K R I S S. <laughs> um, listen, I met Krista. Tony and I met Krista. Um, back in, at Premier Orlando, it was the first time that we had met, um, and we got to sit down with her, and um, we just had like this really cool chemistry. Um, right before we got on air, I was I, I, I was coaching her up and just saying, you know, the only thing that it takes to be a good host is to be naturally curious. Um, and the reason that I asked her is because she's a naturally curious person, and her mom makes the greatest like a uh, uh, coffee cake in the world. Um, I'm pretty sure we talked about that on your podcast there, Krista. But uh, <laughs> you're, you're listening, man, uh, uh, help me welcome Krista. Krista, man, welcome, man, welcome back, or Welcome, welcome in your new seat in the, in the host seat. Is it a host seat? Thank you so much. Seat? It's a host hostess seat. seat. Hostess seat. Yeah. The host yeah. I'm, I'm thinking I need my um, hair industry hat. I was seeing you wear yours and I'm like, wait a second. I need to wear my cap. I mean, if I'm going to be a host, I got to, you know, fit the, fit the vibe. Got to get the hat on. Well, you know, normally I was, uh, you know, in years past when we did the podcast, I was definitely the younger, prettier one. Um <laughs> I'm throwing shade at Tony and he's not even here. That's, that's wrong. But, uh, but, but, but you get to take that, right? So now you're the younger, prettier one and the younger, prettier one doesn't need a freaking hat, Krista. Come on. I'll take, I, Hey, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me on Corey. Well, you know, what's really cool is that um, we have a couple podcasts, you know, um, that we have on the books and that were planned and I'm, I'm uh, it's like friends of Krista, right? So I think it, yeah. that's what name this series, like Friends of Krista. And and certainly today is one of your friends. So um you uh you reach out and you go, Hey, what do you think about this conversation? I was like, let's do it. So so uh tell us a little bit about your friend here. Yeah, so I'm super excited to bring this friend on the podcast today because we met about three years ago. And from the moment I met this woman to who she is today, I'm like, this girl is a boss. She gets stuff done and man, she's an inspiration. And I want other people to feel that. I want other people to see it and leave this episode with something new, new information, and maybe just a spark to start something new. So I'm bringing on Deborah Todd. Deb is somebody I met. And like I said, she just failed. Like she never fails to disappoint you. She is always there. She's always showing up and she is great at it. So Deb had just recently launched a new brand called La Bionda. I hope I said that right, Deb. Please let me know if I did not. But Deb, please tell us about you, where you're from, and how you got started. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Um, Chris and I actually just hung, hung out like last weekend. And when she left, I texted her and I said, I'm, like, I'm sad you're already gone. I wish you were here. So I feel like I'm just hanging out with my homies again. So I'm very excited about that. Yes, which I am, which I am. Um, my name is Deb Todd. I'm from Wilmington, Delaware. If you're not, not familiar with Delaware, it's just south of Philly. A lot of people call us a Philly suburb, um, you know, but I think Delaware, I rep Delaware so hard and Krista can attest to that from when she visited last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so I am a salon owner. I have two salons. One's a full service salon and one is a blow dry bar and head spa. Uh, and I also have a assistant training program that I do, an independent educator. And I, like Krista said, I did just open or launch a new line called La Beyond a Brand. And it is a salon and lifestyle brand. So it's targeted towards hairdressers. Right now, it's very small. It's fun little foils. It's a foiling comb and a detangling brush. But we also have a space where if you are a salon company or whomever independent you can come in and you can create your own branded foils that you can carry in your salon as well 
whoa, so whoa, we wanted whoa, to put whoa, a little bit down. of a what spin. Is, yeah, yeah, br break that down. What do you mean I can have branded foil? Like I can put my logo on it? You can, you can. So this world that we're in, you can brand anything, correct? You can get online, you can brand a shirt, you can brand, brand a cup, you can brand anything. So we're obsessed with fun foils. If you're a colorist, we love sure. when other companies come out with these seasonal foils, with foils that resonate with us. We want to be able to show it off behind the chair. But what better thing to have behind the chair than your own logo on a foil and to I brand mean, yourself that way? You, is, it, is it just a logo or can you put like anything on it? You can put anything on it. I so if you go like box of like Krista's face on like my own foil, <laughs> and by the way, can we do like one big like picture on it or does it have to be like little ones you can do whatever you want so i have an incredible graphic designer what you do is you decide whether you want a one color foil a two color foil or an any color foil you throw on your photos you throw on your color schemes and what my designer does is come back and collabs with you and you get redesigns until you hit it right and then we send it off to our manufacturer and then it comes right to your door that's amazing. And what's the turnaround time? It's about 10 weeks. That's amazing. Chris, That's cool. Imagine. My clients' heads, man. <laughs> Just wait, Corey. I'm going to put your head on all my clients. Just wait. They're going to be like, who's this guy? Oh, dude, you're totally <laughs> going to lose your clientele if you do that. I assure you. <laughs> yeah, I better watch out. I better not get too ahead of myself. <laughs> that's that's. I that's mean, how cool. cool. That that's very that's very cool and and uh, and what what's the cost of that like like if I want to bring in a box because like I know like the other companies boxes the between like seventeen and twenty dollars oh my gosh have foils going up the last couple of years FYI that's a whole other conversation though but but Deb what so what's the turnaround what's the cost of that and is there a minimum there is a minimum so we have a one hundred box minimum so it goes from one hundred two hundred and three hundred box minimums. So obviously the 100 minimum, you're looking around a 20, depending on the colors, how many colors you get, and you can choose the, the size as well. So your standard five by 11, one color. So that's like, let's say your logo on it. You're looking at about $26 a box, where if you go up to 300 boxes, you're looking at about $15 a box, which is big savings to have your branded own foil when you're looking at anywhere really from 22 to 25 dollars a box for those novelty foils you know what i what i definitely see this as a position as as a place like especially like if you're like you're an influencer you're influencing you know um like i definitely see like when you're doing your your your, your i mean ryan you should have some mob foils like where are the mob foils bro but you know what i'm saying like, like ryan text me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a texter. We need some opposites, but like, they should. You should definitely have your logo or your at on there or something like that. That that would be absolutely like brilliant. You know, and there's no question about. And you know, talk about like you know people complain about like people stealing you know your your, your work if your name's all over the uh, the 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 actual image. You know, the foil in there can't can't nobody do that stuff. Yeah. Right. Right. It's guaranteed. Right. It's awesome. All right, I, I have I have a lot of questions, Krista, unless you do. This is supposed to be your interview, Krista. Come on. Yeah, no. Okay, so first I want to say, like, as a client, if I was getting my hair done and my stylist pulled out a foil and on the foil was the name of the salon or the name of the hairdresser, like, I would be so impressed with, with that. And you know how clients take that client selfie when the foils are in the hair? They can tag the salon. They can post about it. And, I mean, great client selfie to have great way to market yourself and great way to brand so i just i love i love that idea so Corey, i want to hear your question well i mean my question is to go a little bit deeper is, is to go like you know like you know aside from like what 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 deb can do like i'm really curious as the process into like i want to start a product line i want to do this like like how did walk me through the process of like starting something like this like how'd you find your manufacturer how did you how did you how'd you source how'd you vet them you know all, all the things so great great question because i think we do live in a world where we can find really you can find anything at your fingertips you can get on any you know app that sources from china and you can find a white label and just put your put your logo on it and just say it's yours but um I think the difference is you really, if you're really into something and you really want to create a product that's going to stick, you really need to do your research. And I will break that down for you as well. 
I started this because I love other branded foils or other other um, companies, but they would come in and I'd say, man, I wish I could change just this a little bit about it, right? Um, I wish it was a little bit longer. I wish it was a little bit thicker. I wish it was a little bit wider, something like that. Um, so I was thinking to myself, like, if I can figure out how to do this, why not put my logo on it? If I want to go as far as trying to create my own foil that makes sense for me behind the chair, why not take it a step further? So I was fortunate enough to have a husband that was in the food industry. He had a, um, a food distribution company. So if you think of something like Cisco, he was just like Cisco, but regional. Right. And he does a lot of custom pizza boxes and things like to-go boxes and whatever for local pizzerias and takeout restaurants in the area. So I reached out to him. Well, I reached out to him. I went to him and was like, hey, this is my idea. Am I crazy? Like, is there somebody that you could put me in contact with to then where I can try and figure out this foil? Because I'm thinking if you're sending Reynolds wrap to somebody or, you know, regular food foil to somebody that comes from somewhere and you're sourcing it at the end of the day, everything is made in the manufacturers. They are made in China, but it's that middleman that you want to talk to. That's going to get you there. Correct. So I was fortunate enough to have my husband put me in contact with the right people who put me in contact with the right people to then get that started down to, you know, size the micron of the foil and have them just send me a bunch of different samples and work on it behind the chair until I figured that until it felt right for me. So, okay. So how many samples did it take? How many like trial and error did you have of going back and forth between like, Oh, this is good, but I don't like this, or this is great, but I don't like that. It was six. So it doesn't sound like it was uh, the six doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're talking to somebody who's then sending it to a manufacturer and then that manufacturer is creating it and then shipping it to you from overseas, it's, it's a process. So we started this process a little over a year and a half ago. And once you start it, once you had your, your control, basically, then you could grow from there. So I started with a different texture and a different micron, didn't like it, up to the micron, kept the texture, but also did one with a different texture. So there's so many different avenues that you can do until um, we really landed one that when I worked on it behind the chair felt right for me. and. I think you even noticed it. I have had other hairdressers notice it. A couple of my different foil designs are different densities. And they're like, wow, I really love this one for baby lights. I love this one for balayage or cheesy lights. I love this one for taking my really wide foiling sections across the back of the head. And I created each one specifically for that. So it was really validating to me to know that you guys also saw that as well, knowing like, one foil does not fit. It's not a one size fits all. And that's what it was created for to be able to be creative and use different things for different techniques. Now, a process like this, I'm, oh, sorry, Corey. No, no, you're up, Corey. Um, a process like this, I mean, it can be really challenging to go back and forth. I know you said six and, you know, to somebody listening, they're probably like, oh, six times. It's not many. But like you were saying, when you're shipping it back, who's shipping it back to this person and you're going through three different people just to finally get to you those six different times, how long did that take? It was about, I would say eight months until we hammered down the correct first foil for us. Oh, that's so, a long time. It's a long time. Yeah, it were feels you ever like a long just, time. It feels like a long time. Were yeah. you ever just like, screw it, I'm just gonna say this is it because I'm tired of going back and forth? Definitely when I, I get a, I feel like when I get, my head onto something, I get very manic about it. You know, like, I'm like, I just want it now. I'm ready to just have this here and have this in my hands. And yes, there was a point where I'm like, this will do. But then I don't want something that'll just be okay. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to settle. I don't settle for anything in my life. So I didn't want to just settle for something that was, that worked, but wasn't something that I was like super, super, super excited about. So yes, I definitely had to learn patience, but I also learned in this whole, through this whole time is something that if you want it to be sustainable, you need to give it the time. You need to let it grow, right? 
So I didn't want to rush this because this is something, this is a lot of time, a lot of money and a lot of like my livelihood too, where I just, it can't be rushed even as much as I wanted it to be. Nor should it be, you know, because, uh, you know, every, everything is right. That, like takes that time, you know, I Absolutely. think uh, who's that, who's that music producer that started out with Def Jam, the big guy with the big beard. But uh, basically he says, you know, like you don't make music for other people. He goes, you know, the movies have been doing that forever. And that's why movies are no good anymore. He goes, you know, you make it for yourself and, and you'll find, and you'll find the people that believe in, or that, that dig what you dig. But if you don't do it for yourself, then you're not really doing it. You know, that's not, what do he say? Oh, he says that that's, uh, that's not art, right? Rick Rubin. That's what I'm thinking of Rick Rubin. So Rick Rubin said that that's not art. Art isn't like when you produce something for the masses, art is when you produce something for yourself. And if the masses like it, great, you know, not to be connected with the outcome, but to be connected to the, to the actual art. I don't know if that makes, I don't know if that fits here or not, but anyways, it's, it's an interesting conversation regardless. It, abso it absolutely does. And I say it all the time. I call everything that I do my passion projects because it doesn't matter whether somebody else likes it, right? It's that I like it. And same, same message is if ever, other people like it too, then, then great. But it's all about, you know, do I like it? Am I proud of it? And I am. <laughs> okay. So when it comes down to you found the perfect product, you, you came up with the perfect dimensions and everything when it comes down to actually putting that product into a box tell me about your process to that your brand colors how did you figure that out so i have a wonderful graphic designer that i've been working with since i opened my first salon and she's somebody that i really connect with on so not just like a business level but a personal level too and I definitely recommend to anybody starting anything is to take the time and invest in your graphic designer or your person that helps market for you because that can make or break you. And she is somebody that I can say, hey, I send her wild voice memos every single day. And she's somebody that's like, I get it. I got it. So for her, she understands that I'm like, La Bionda brand. It's, I'm not Italian, but it means the blonde in Italian, which I think is, it just, it's a really cute, fun, it's easy to, well, I don't want to say it's easy to say, but it's easy. It rolls off your tongue, right? When you say La Bionda, La Bionda brand. And I was like, I want it to not just market to a feminine, not just be feminine, but be fun. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm a very girly girl and I love fun. I like I, I, when you're using these things and you want to look at them and you want them to be fun and you want them to be pretty. And I told her, this is my energy that I'm putting towards it. I want it to reflect my personality and I want it to be something that I enjoy looking at every single day, but she, she knows my personality. So from that point, us collaborating together, saying, I want it to be like fun, bright colors. Like a lot of boxes of foils do come in very like everybody loves like that neutral aesthetic, but there's nothing wrong with that, but I want it to be more fun. I want it to be bigger and brighter than that. And so having somebody that understands my vision and being able to communicate well with her, that's how we were able to then create our colors and our logos and our branding for the boxes that go in the foil. And she's like, hey, this might hit, this might not. I'm gonna send some things over to you and let me know what you think. And it's always been a collaboration of me drawing crazy squiggles and colors on a piece of paper and like taking a photo of it and showing it to her and being like, do you get it? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like stick figures, you know? <laughs> but somebody like her, she understands the way my brain works. So we're able to very, I would say very easily um, collaborate on things like that. I've been very fortunate in that sense to have somebody that I can very easily collaborate with. That's amazing, dude. I, I just, I don't, I, to back up a little bit, like how do you have time for all these passion projects, you know, with two salons and like a product company and a, a husband, do you have any kids? I've got three kids. Okay. So three kids. Oh, geez, Louise lady. Like how, how do you, in, 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 in a real way, how do you, um, how do you manage the day? I manage the day with my husband who is my biggest supporter. He's like, I will tell him something crazy. And he's like, let's fucking go. Mm. And it's like, I need a let's fucking go person in our life. Don't we? 
Yes, we do. <laughs> yes. I'm so lucky that my husband is my hype man. And um, he's also, he, he sold his company um, a couple years ago and he's just been use it he's just been investing in me since then and whether it flops or not he's like i believe in you and your vision and your passion so he's i'm so fortunate enough to have somebody invest in me just not just their time but their money and um and you know go from there but i i manage the day with an incredible husband and i have a great um home team that supports me i have a full-time nanny who loves my kids as much as i do and then I also have a great team for at work. I have a great GM that manages both my salons. We communicate very, very well. I'm still hands-on, but she gives me the freedom to then be able to pursue these other passions and also still be the boss, but not be in there every single day working in my business so I can work on my business. So that's really important to have a, a, real, a great team that you trust. And is your is your is your blowout bar are those two different um, uh, brick and mortars like that in the salon? They are, they are. They're very close together. They're very separate concepts, though. So I was a little nervous when I opened this my second location because you really don't want to rob Peter to pay Paul, right? No. But because they are two separate um, ideas, and one of them is an experience, um, they they both run very very well, but. You know, again, selling an experience, this space, I'm actually in my second, my aloe blow now. Um, it is definitely something where it's hard to sell it unless somebody's done it, which we're doing head spas here. And um, once people have experienced it, they're obsessed. But all right, listen, I'm going to be I'm going to be the naive one in the room until about I'm going to say a year, but it might be six months. I'd never heard of a head spa. Like, 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 how did this, how did this trend hit so quick and so big? Because now, like, I mean, you know, back to, back to everyone's like Instagram, like, uh, you know, def, uh, or, you know, defining thing on there. Like now everything's a head spa. Am, am I wrong in this or is this, or, 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 or am I late to this? You are, you are definitely right on point. Um, it definitely has blown up in the past six months, I'd say to a year, but definitely in the past six months. It's, I feel like us on the East Coast, we're the last to get it. You know, years ago, head spas have been big in California, but now they're starting to get big over here. And of course, they started in Japan and worked their way the long way around, right? right. So it's definitely catching on. I'm glad that it's catching on. I need it to catch on. <laughs> right. But you definitely are not, not behind on that. And a head spa is, it's we are in a world i think especially after covid people have realized how important um scalp and hair health is because a lot of people experienced insane hair loss in covid mm -hmm. and or even with um people being on these weight loss injections people are experiencing hair loss because of malnutrition things like that it's changing their skin so we're in a good position now to say hey healthy hair grows from the root just like Plants need healthy soil to grow and to thrive. You need a healthy scalp, a healthy follicle to have that hair grow and thrive. Let us help you. We're here to help you. We're here to focus on your scalp and hair health. Just like, you know, you get routine facials to make sure your skin is glowing. Your face is also your scalp. So we need to treat that well too. And it's it's been great, especially if you're somebody that has, you know, experienced not so great luck with your scalp, you know, flaky scalp or even dandruff build up psoriasis. We help people with psoriasis, things like that. They've noticed a huge change in how their hair grows and looks. And, and with the, and I, honestly, these are, these are just questions that I, I kind of, I wanted a head spot personal so I could start, start to take over your con, your conversation here, Crystal, but I have so many questions now. No, please. So, so like with the, with, with the head spa, like is your goal, is it one's goal to like now have them, as a clientele or, or, or is the goal to be like, you know, go see your hairstylist, Duval. go see your Krista. You know, she, she's at the salon down the street, but you know, come into us for like, for like scalp health. You can't, oh. you can't just nod. You get, you got to talk. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, Both definitely both. Um, 
we have a lot of people that come in and they're like, I just want to treat myself. I'm going to treat myself to something like this once a year, just like people only get massages once a year. And they're like, why don't I do this more often? But sometimes it might not be in the budget it's, or it's just not a priority to them, correct? And then we have people that we do have that crossover where we're like, come in for a head spa or come in for color because we do do color right up the street. But a lot of our clients are clients that have their Christas and they come in here just for a relaxing experience. They don't feel like they're cheating on their colorist because they're coming in here for a different service. And we're here for all of that, regardless of whether you're a one-time client or a repeat client, whether you're somebody that's going to get your color services with us or not, we still want to see you and we still want to help you. But icing on the cake, icing on the cake if they decide to get their color with us as well. So, yeah. The two things that are interesting is that um, one is that um, it's like back to the hospitality of it. You know, I, I, I think, it, and I'm guilty of it, by the way, I'm not coming from a place of not guilt, but you know, like, like, like hospitality has kind of not been the priority. Like it certainly was once in my career, you know? So I think that, I think that it, it, it injects that hospitality back and like make it about, about the client and about their hair and about, the, all that stuff. Uh, I also have always thought, and I kind of want to dish dish this out and see what your thought is. But um, like like using like the head spa experience, I also thought that there would be like it'd be interesting. I always thought it'd be interesting and maybe profitable to do like a to do a salon that just does like hair treatment. So, you know, go see Krista for your balayage or go see Krista for your whatever, but you can come to us and we're going to give you like the best, like one step Olaplex, or we're going to give you like the best, like K 18 thing, or like, or like incorporate a spa that, I mean, incorporate a salon or a spa experience. That's just about taking care of the hair, you know? So you don't have to like go to Krista to get like a one step Olaplex or something like that. What are your thoughts on that? I, I, <laughs> I've got a lot of thoughts on that, but so we are something like that because we do offer um, just treatments as well. It's great because a lot of clients do say, oh, oh, I don't think to go to my stylist for X, Y, and Z. I just go there for a color or a haircut. And the great thing about having a space like this is you don't have to get just a head spa. You can come in. We have a treatment called the Aloe Glow, and it is a conditioning treatment, and while your hair is getting treated, you're getting a scalp massage, a hand massage, you have a nice warm eye mask, and you're getting treated while your hair is getting treated, and then you finish with a blowout, something like that. The unfortunate thing about having just a space for that is not many people think that hair health is that important unless you're in a, your hair is compromised. There aren't many people that say, let me just maintain my hair health by getting a treatment. They have to, something has to affect them first. So that's like the good and the bad side of all of that. But we do want to be, and again, continue to try and market ourselves and grow into a space where, yeah, it's not just a head spa. You can come in here for a treatment as well, along with your blowout, or you can leave wet. We'll give you a nice little braid and off you go. A little lunchtime special. Oh, I like that. Leave in a braid. Yeah. So the cool thing too, Corey, I wanted to bring this up as well, because I've had the pleasure of seeing Deb Salon in person. And let me just say, if like, if you're listening right now, I want you to pause this podcast, go to her Instagram and check out this salon. I mean, if heaven were a hair salon, it would be aloe. Let me just say that. It is stunning. It's beautiful, tall ceilings. It's white. There's a lot of light to it. I mean, it's just, it's very, very gorgeous. It feels it creates a feeling when you're in there. I've, I've had a pleasure of getting a blowout in her salon as well. And the cool thing about her head spa and her blowout and her like color space, it's all within like a same area. So Corey, you were saying earlier how now in the industry, we don't focus so much more on like the relaxing side of the hair. You know, we're now we're focusing more on the color, the root chatter, like getting clients in and out. Whereas we kind of lost a little bit of that relax, relaxing experience. And I feel like the head spa has really brought that back together. So Deb Salon, Deb, if you actually want to talk about this, how your salon runs, since it's all within that one place, how do you organize something like that and create this experience to where every client and every stylist walking in is in a clear understanding of what they're walking into? Great question. Thank you. Um, so Again, like I said, we have two separate salons. One is a full service salon and that's big and loud and boisterous and colorful. And then we have this space, which 
is I wanted to mimic the feeling of being in more of like a spa setting. So the way we market this and we do let our clients know we have, um, we have automated messages that go out, also text messages, and even a sign when you walk in saying, regardless of the treatment that you are receiving, we want everybody to get the most out of this experience. And we do like to keep this as quiet and spa-like as possible. So if you are receiving a service that isn't a head spa, we do ask that you keep your volume low and treat it as if you are in a spa. So we have a lot of clients, even for color, that want to come here because they want a quiet service. They want to feel relaxed. Same with the blow dryers. Even though the blow dryers are going, it's kind of like white noise and everybody's there to just chill out. And when you walk in, you can catch that vibe too. You're not going to come in here and start popping it off. We have really like lo-fi music playing and the aromas here. We have a lot of aromatherapy with essential oils. You really feel like you're coming into a calm spa setting that is going to keep everybody chill. And if somebody's in here popping off, we do go up to them and tap their shoulder and we're like, hey, we're so excited that you're here and we're excited that you're excited. However, we don't want to take away from the experience from anybody else. And that's how we keep things chill. That's incredible. So you, oh, sorry, Corey. So you're up. You're so up. you have your two salons. I just want to make sure I have this clear. So you have Aloe Blow, which is like your blow dry bar, your head spa, and then you do some color there as well, correct? Yes. And then you have your blowout bar that's like strictly blowout? Or no, you have your color space that is strictly like the crazy salon. And then not crazy, but you know, the more um, energetic atmosphere. And then you have your quiet space. Yes. Yes. Okay. So our Aloe Hair Studio is the, it's like tiny, but it has like a big personality. And there's a lot going on because it's a little bit smaller. It's a lot busier and there's a lot of energy and it's fun and it, it is energetic and it's very colorful. And that's where we do, you know, haircuts, color, everything. And then aloe blow, it's aloe blow dry bar and head spa is where we do the blow dries and the head spas. We do do color here, but it's not really marketed that way. It's kind of like if we have stylists at the other salon that do want to have like a chill day and our, their clients want to have a chill day, they'll pop over here and there's a space for them to do that as well because we want it to be very inclusive of how everybody wants their experience to be, right? So we do have clients that specifically request to be at Allo Blow because they're trying to just zen out. And I love that. I love that too. I love to have that, that, that availability. Um, the, the, uh, is it, I don't know how to really position this, but, um, those that are doing the head spas, are they like hairstylists or do you have like a, do you have like a good assistant, um, program that, that, um, that's doing that? Like who's, who's responsible, not responsible, but you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Who's doing them? So our, everybody in, whether they're doing blow dries or head spas, they are licensed cosmetologists or licensed estheticians. So we have two licensed estheticians that are doing the head spas. And then we have one that is a licensed cosmetologist. Once you're done the head spa, you bop over to a blow dry specialist who's a licensed cosmetologist that will finish, that will do your blow dry. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. That's, that's really cool, actually. And then can you, um, so like if I work at like, uh, we'll call it Salon A, the uh, the small um, rambunctious one, um, the small rambunctious ones, like toddlers. <laughs> so, yes, it is a toddler. <laughs> it is the toddler of the group. <laughs> so so when we're in the toddler salon, like if I wanted to book like a head spa with uh, with Krista, who works over there, can can I book time with her at, um, at the head spa salon? So... If you were getting a head spa, you couldn't book with Krista. You would have to be with just specifically a head spa specialist. If yeah. Krista was only at the other salon, you would have to book with Krista there. But let's say you said, hey, Krista, I would really love to just have the experience of the other salon while you do my color. We are about a mile apart from each other. So the way that goes is we're like, if Krista wants to, yeah, nice I don't know where those flames came from. <laughs> if Krista wants to, Krista can be like, absolutely, I'll take my book there for the day and just pop one over. And that's how that would be handled that way, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it definitely does. That, that's really yeah. cool. That, that's, that, that's, that's really, really cool. How are you, um, uh, to get away from the spa stuff for a sec, like how are you as a manager? And how, 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 much, how big is your staff? We have 20, 25, 25 of us right now. And 
how am I as a manager? I try to treat everybody like they're running their own business and I don't micromanage at all. I try and step in if I need to, if there needs to be some sort of conflict resolution, but I don't treat people like children. And I think that's a big thing about being a manager and owner in a, especially commission salon. You want to treat people like you, you want to treat people how you want to be treated with respect. And as long as I respect you, and or you respect me, I'm going to respect you. And as long as we're not causing any issues with each other or the staff around you, it's all good. Um, and everybody, everybody here is on the same page with that. I definitely am a big believer in hiring slow and firing fast. Mm -hmm. So if you come into this space and you aren't vibing, I'm, I'm not going to hold on to you and see if it works out. And I tried that in my early days of my salon and it ends up just kicking me in the butt on the end, on the backside. So if you're not a fit, you're not a fit. And as long as our team is doing what they're supposed to be doing, I'm just popping in and making sure that they feel supported in whatever it is that they need. What, what are they supposed to do? Like what, what, what's the criteria like when, before mama talks to you, like what's the expectation? So mama sets up the expectation, but before you have to have a talk with them, like, like what, I mean, are we talking like, like retail numbers? Are we talking like pre books? Are like, what, 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 what's the criteria there? The criteria is just come in and do you and have a good time doing it and make sure that you're putting out the quality that you should, that you're, that is of your, of your level and if you're not, then we would have a conversation. But I don't push numbers. Other salon owners are probably going to be like, ah, oh, but I don't push numbers too hard. I do try and set quarterly goals with them. If they are not meeting them, I'm not like, hey, what are you doing? You're out of here. It's really, I just, everybody, there's a different circumstance for your numbers. But my only, again, my criteria is come in be consistent, put out good work and be kind and show up, show up for your, yourself, show up for your clients. Like you would expect them to show up for you. They're taking their time out of their day. They're paying you money and they're choosing you when there's so many other people to choose and be grateful for that. And if you're making your clients feel like they are a burden, if you are coming into the salon, making it seem like even being there is a burden, then we're going to have a conversation. But outside of that, as long as you're doing, again, what you're supposed to be doing, and that's, you know, just coming in and showing up and having so. a good time, that's it. But you know what? You know what's interesting is, like, we're in a very unique industry because even though your commission, you, you started off with this, it's absolutely your business. You know, everything that happens in that chair, everything that happens behind that chair is your business, and we're very unique in that and that, and I don't know, I don't know necessarily if I understood that as a young hairstylist, but I certainly understand it now. Like this is your business, your relationships and our entire industry is built on relationships. Look left, look right, look up, look down. It's all about relationships. There's nothing in between those relationships, but, um, but, uh, yeah, back to it. Like that is your business. Those are your people. Now you have great support from these commission salon owners and, and that, and that's what it should be, but you know, treat it as your business and you won't fail in this industry. The second you stop treating, it's treating that chair as your business. That, that's where the trouble runs in. And that's when the burnout happens. That's just my two cents. Krista, you're on. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I absolutely love that. I think as a commission stylist myself and to the commission stylists out there, it's easy to rely on a salon to help grow you. But I think the minute you look at it as like, this is your business and the work you put in is the rewards you're going to receive. I think that really motivates stylists to put themselves out there on social media, put themselves out there on marketing and, you know, get those foils with their name on it and, you know, do things to help them grow. So I love that. I love Absolutely. That. Yeah, so I think, oh, I, I think that it's, it's, if I tell my girls, I can only meet you as far as you've met me. So if you're not putting in the effort, I can only do so much. And I can't be there to take your photos for you every single day. I can't be there to, you know, whatever that may be. You need to decide to show up for yourself. And I will do everything in my power to support you. I am going to, I am going to market you as much as I can. I'm going to put your name out there. I'm going to make sure that you're getting the 
correct education, but you need to tell me what are what education are you interested in? What is it that you want to do? Or, you know, take the time to take a photo of your of your client. You don't even have to post it. Send it to me. I'll post it for you. Things like that. Um, but I can't do that if you're not meeting me halfway. So again, Krista, like you said, it's easy to rely on a commission salon to grow you, but I can only grow you as much as you want to be grown. Help me. And if help we work you. in this together, you can explode. That's that's awesome. Okay. That's really awesome. So, Deb, are you still sorry. running the chair at all? I am. Um, I'm not right now because I'm still in maternity leave. I've taken an extended maternity. Well, actually, I I took my maternity leave like early before I had the baby, and so it seems like it's been a very long time. She's only ten weeks old though, so mm -hmm. I plan on going back in November. But my schedule is just, it's kind of, it's its not consistent. I've opened up days that I know I'm going to be available and I'm opening up just one month at a time, just trying to play it by ear. It's, I'm in a tough situation right now because I love doing hair so much. It's it, its literally what, what has built, the foundation of this whole entire business has been built on. But I also love growing my my girls. I love putting my time and energy into them. If we want to circle back to the assistant program that I have and also just making sure that this, this home that everybody's in is a steady, has a sturdy foundation and being behind the chair has become more and more tough to be able to give my clients a hundred percent, but then also give my business a hundred percent. So that whole, you can't work on your business while working in your business. It's, becoming very, very true for me. But I also, again, it fills my cup being here and working with color and making my clients feel good. And so I need to also make time for that because it's it's important to me, even though it is getting a little more difficult. You know, tattoo artists do that all the time. They'll like open their book a month at a time. Like, mm -hmm. hey, it's open, you know, do a big post. Hey, it's open, you know, jump in where you can, you know, like at least my tattoo guys do that all the time, you know. Um, and, and then it's still hard to get in with them if you're like, oh, well, we'll try next month. You know, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think I've grab probably grabbed my inspo from tattoo artists for that too. I'm like, if they can do it, I can do it because you know, there's people that are like, I want, like, what do you mean I can't pre book until next July? And I'm like, well, I know, but <laughs> are we going to be here next July? I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not my responsibility whether we're going to be here. Yeah. Right. You know? I'll uh -huh. be here, right? That, that, that's all we can do. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. I just I, I still like I'm calculating the hours and I don't know how you do it. Like, like super impressed that, you know, anything, every, not anything. I'm super impressed that everything can get done. That, that's that's really, really cool. I can't. It, I mean, it can, but it can't. There are days where my I just have to prioritize what's important that day. And can this wait till tomorrow or can this wait till next week? And again, like. I'm somebody that just like, I need to do it and do it fast so I can move on to the next thing. But a lot of times it is prioritizing and just making a sacrifice for one thing to make sure that this is getting my attention. And then, you know, I, I remind myself, like, it's not going to be destroyed overnight if it doesn't get done today. And I have to consistently remind myself of that. And there are days where I'm like storming around like an angry psycho because I didn't get as much done as I need to do. But, you know, there's always tomorrow. Always tomorrow. We um early on in the podcast, we interviewed a woman named Teresa Scanlon, a little super history, super quick history about Teresa. She um she was the youngest Miss America in Miss American history. She was 17 years old when she was uh, when she won the uh, won, won the position or I don't know what you would win, but you win the position. Right. So um, but you also have to imagine that she was homeschooled. So she literally went from you know never ever ever even spending a night out of her family's home to now being Miss America and traveling the world and not seeing her family for for a year. I only bring this up because I asked her, you know, um, you know how were the how how was her relationship when she got back home? And she said, and, and I think that this is it's become almost a mantra of mine, or certainly like a checkpoint for mine, is like you know when when you're that busy and you're doing that much, your family gets the worst side of you. 
And, and, and it, this has been an incredible, like I said, I, I've turned this quote into a mantra, like make sure that I'm present when I'm with my family, because they don't deserve to get the worst side of you. They deserve to get the best side of you, no matter how busy or no matter what you're doing. So uh, is there something like that for you where you, you where you really have to check in? Because, you know, whether we we can read all the uh, all the uh, Instagram uh, inspirational posts in the world. But, you know, what's your che- what's your check as far as like you know, I need to be here for them. And and again, it, it's not fair that they get the worst side of me. And I'm not suggesting that it is, but for me, that's my experience. No, you're, you're very, you're very correct on that. And it's, I, I really have tried to find a healthy balance. I don't know if there's ever really going to be a super healthy balance. Unfortunately, I hate to admit that I'm still working on it. I'm an imperfect human, but I, it's usually around dinner time, around 6.30 with my kids when I'm like, okay, my phone is going off, I'm putting it in a different room and it's going on do not disturb. And even though those, it's not that long between dinner, bath and bedtime, they're getting my undivided attention there. And I know that that's when like time is fleeting, right? It, it, they, they grow so fast and there's, there's I don't wanna look back and think, man, I should have spent, enjoyed those times with my kids because nothing is guaranteed. I don't know where, where this business is going to go, but my kids are my, and my family are the most important to me. So making sure that I give them my undivided attention from that time, not looking at my phone, not worrying about whether somebody's upset or calling out or somebody's reaching out about an appointment or I get an order that needs to be fulfilled, you know, God forbid, I don't pack it immediately, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I try and just give this dedicated time to my family where I'm not worried about anything else and, you know, shutting everything off. And a lot of times it's easier said than done, but you, again, it's just building those habits and early, early in the morning, my kids are up super early, my phone, I don't even look at it until 8am and that's my time for them as well. And any time in between that from eight to four, or eight to five is when I'm just hustling, trying to get stuff done. Or at ten o'clock at night after they go to bed. Well, but then, but then at ten o'clock at night, now like you got to redo it. Like, okay, well, I guess my husband's home. (laughs) 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 Honey, how was your day? Yeah, he's well. Luckily, luckily for him, luckily for him, um, he he owned a very big, busy business, so he understands the the hustle and and the anxiety and all the tension and stress and whatever it is that comes with it, but. We have family in in Southern Florida. Both my parents and my in-laws live down there. And uh, we try to take like one weekend a month and go down there and basically put our kids on our family. And like, that's where we have our time to reconnect as well. So like when we're away those weekends, nothing gets done except us hanging out with each other. And then we do really try our best to create like dedicated date nights even if it's just hanging in bed with a pizza, watching a movie, we can't go out. We try and make that law. So we do reconnect on those moments. And during the week, we're two ships passing in the night, but then Fridays at, you know, whatever time we know that we're going to be able to see each other and hang out then as well. So we try and make sure that as important as everything else is is reconnecting with each other on these weekends away and those nights at home or wherever it is. And we're not, we're not talking business. It's like we're not talking business. We're just hanging out. <laughs> not talking business. Not talking about those kids. Yeah, I know. We're <laughs> like we. I say it. I'm like we're not going to talk about the kids. We're not going to talk about the company. We sit down and like 20 minutes later, we're like looking at photos of the kids, being like, "How cute are they?" <laughs> <laughs> right. Totally. That's awesome. Have you guys watched? We just started watching. Um, what's the name of the show? Uh, nobody wants this. Have you guys watched this, by the way, on Netflix? No, but that's the one with Sarah Michelle. No, Sarah. No, 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 no. Sarah Marshall. Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell. Yeah. yeah. Kristen, have you watched it? No, but Deb, we actually saw a preview for that when we were sitting. We were like, wait a second. We almost watched that. And then instead we watched a movie with um, George who, Clooney. Who was it? George Clooney. I learned who George Clooney was. <laughs> wait a second. You said George well, Clooney was? <laughs> Krista's very Clooney. young. I don't know if you know that. I know that. No, I, I knew do. his name, or I knew his face, and I knew his name, but you know, the two just never clicked. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So was the movie what, was no. that with Brad Pitt? Could that, that yes. Was... Yeah. Wolves. 
It was cute. We we were like snuggling on the couch, like it was the night before our class, and we were like, "Do we go out or stay home?" And we're like, "Let's just let's just watch Netflix." And we were flipping through like the previews, and we saw the preview for Nobody Wants This, and we almost started it, and we were like, "This is a series. We're gonna stay up too late. Let's just watch the movie because we know it's gonna end." Well, I will tell you this: it is very funny. The, it looks uh, funny. Nobody wants this. Um, it's so funny. It's so cute. It's just endearing, you know. Anyways, we're about halfway through with my wife, so I it, uh, I can't wait to can't wait to finish that. So you know, shameless plug there, Netflix. Um, as everyone, <laughs> right. hey, everybody that tunes in tonight, it's our fault. Netflix, <laughs> cut us off a little bite there. That's yeah, how, right. That, that's cool that you guys didn't go out though. Like, yeah, we'll do like a Netflix and cuddle. Oh yeah. It we did great. an early dinner. We did an early, sweet little dinner, like two old women would. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then, yeah, we snuggled and watched Netflix. I love that. That's so. That's it so great. That's so cool. I I kind of miss well, a, a date night TV though too, right? I mean, another thing that kind of gets in the way, you know, like you know, we would we would get okay Thursday night, eight o'clock. This is on. We're not friends. Friends is on at eight o'clock Thursday night. We're not doing anything, you know. But then you know, life happens. I was a big ER girl with my mom. Speaking of George Clooney, ER was like church for me with my mom on Thursdays. I believe it was. I think you're right. That that was our jam too. We did uh we we did ER as well. I don't think we missed an episode of that. You know. No, that and like Walker Texas Ranger. Well, that was my uh, that was my uh, grandmother. She watched Walker Texas Ranger. Like I don't I don't know if we really we really got into that one. There. <laughs> my so my dad. Friend. I watched it with my dad. <laughs> Walker, Texas Ranger. Although Chuck Norris is pretty badass. I mean, he really is. He really is. And um, her, him and Dr. Quinn, medicine woman. I mean, I was, I was, I too was homeschooled. So <laughs> this is where we get our, our, our thrills. Okay. Dave. Good. Dateline or Dateline television. Yeah. I actually think that homeschooling to just have a real conversation for a second. I think homeschooling is, is gonna is gonna be on the rise a lot. Here's here's my opinion about it. And like, you know, whatever, it's just my opinion. I don't care if you like it or not. But um, you know, you take some my daughter's 30, just for the record. So like I, I kind of look at her and like her entire school career was 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 uh 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 oh, what am I looking for? Filtered, I guess maybe is a good word, but it was filtered by like either the Columbine shooting or by September eleventh. And my only point is, is that when I grew up, like school was like a safe haven. Like it was it was before we had safe spaces, it was just a safe space for me. It was like a second home, you know. Um, but I don't I don't necessarily know if she felt that way. I don't know if she felt that school was was a safe haven or a safe place to be. You know, we always had like we always had like the bitchy people that we had to worry about, but we never had to worry about those bitchy people like, you know, killing us, you know, and and that's yeah. always a fear. And what that does, and I noticed it during COVID that like even the neighbors that I loved all of a sudden were my enemies, you know, all, all of a sudden were somebody that I had to avoid, even though I love them and I still love them and I love them now. But during that, certainly early on in COVID, like everybody was the villain. So I couldn't imagine coming up in school and thinking like, oh, somebody in here could be the villain and being fearful of that. Um, I know that my, my daughters chose to homeschool her kids, um, but it's it's kind of because of that. You know, whenever whenever there's like a shoot a school shooting that's reported or any kind of trauma in the school, like she kind of sits back and not to be not being rude, but like like I'm glad I made the decision that I made because now this isn't even anything that I need to worry about or think about or whatever. Um, so I, I really think that it's on the rise. And I think it's because of that. I think so often we have conversations about like the stress that and you hear it all the time, like social media is creating so much stress for the for for these people and like everyone's self-esteem is blown up by this and i go no 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 it's not self it, it's not just social media it's also the fact that when they're in school there's not a safe space when they're in school they're being they're being pushed into a corner or they're 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 going through these active like shooting drills and stuff like that's not a place to feel safe i mean if you don't think that that's going to have an effect on somebody's self-esteem when you're doing that once a week or whenever you do it and i'm not suggesting we don't do that that's not what i'm saying but i'm saying but i'm saying that all of this the entire the entire media landscape and the entire way that that we're kind of raising kids is going to have an effect on anxiety it's going to have effect an effect on that how can you possibly have a school shooting and not be and not be traumatized by anxiety from that like they, there's good reason why they, why 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 we're here. I don't know how we got here, but anyway, that's my two cents about it. And and but back to your point, I think, or back to my point, I guess. I'm I'm, I'm taking your point and making it mine, or I'm taking my point and making it yours. 
that I think homeschool is on the rise. And I also think with AI and with the internet and all that, also the cost of entry is minimal. You know, the, the energy and the effort to, uh, is minimal. Like I couldn't imagine doing this without any resource. Anyways, that's it. I'm open. Tables open. Your, your, your conversation. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's so true. I, you know, when I was homeschooled, not to go too much into homeschooling, but when I was homeschooled, I, when I was younger, I hated it. And I just couldn't understand why, like, I loved watching my neighbors get on the bus. I loved watching them, like, all the back to school shopping. I was so jealous that I wasn't, I didn't have, like, a big new binder of my own that was, like, separated from my classes. But the older that I got, and especially now, I look back at it, and I'm like, wow, how fortunate was I that I wasn't spending my time just wasting time in class doing I don't want to say nothing, but a lot of it is just moving through the halls and a lot of buffering time where you really only need two to three full hours a day to get in what you really need. And my mom would take us to on a trip and we, that would be our homeschooling. You know, we would, or the month, the time of the month when the bills were due, we'd all write a check. She'd teach us how to write a check. That was our math for the day. We'd be able to go down to the beach and go to the Lenape tribes, you know, old stomping grounds and learn about the Native Americans that landed here and really be immersed in all of that and just things that was more day-to-day -day life that we were able to learn. And I do think that it gave me a heads up, I think, or an advantage as an adult to a degree. I mean, I don't know, I'm not out here curing cancer, but I, I do appreciate it so much more now that I'm older and I do have my own kids and I wish I was patient enough to homeschool, but <laughs> my, my kids deserve better than me. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but I, I do, I do think that it definitely is on the rise. People are able to give their kids more individualized attention than they're getting in school. And also my goodness, in this economy, to send your kids to private school. I don't know it, where it is in other places in the country, but Delaware doesn't have a great public school system. So you're sending your kids to private school and that's that's somebody's annual salary. My goodness. Yeah, for sure. Homeschool them kids. <laughs> <laughs> Homeschool them kids. <laughs> Homeschool them kids. Yeah. That, that'll be your next company. Homeschool them kids. <laughs> yeah. be a home My homeschool curriculum. No. <laughs> You can get your face printed on your homeschool curriculum. Yes. <laughs> or you can get Krista's face printed on your homeschool curriculum. Exactly, yeah. Oh Krista's mom's face. Oh, that's good. Uh, uh, yeah, coffee? it'll be my mom. It's coffee cake. Coffee cake and read. coffee cake. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, gosh. Guys, thanks for hanging I out. Krista, uh, what else you got there? Um, You know, like, I mean, Deb, you are salon owner stylist a, you own a brand you're a mentor you're an independent educator how long have you been doing all this so i got into the hair industry 13 14 years ago it was like 2010 whenever that was i guess 14 years ago i didn't actually plan on doing hair as a career path it i don't want to say it fell into my lap but I was somebody that was always creative to kind of make this long story long. My dad, who is a contractor by trade, is also an artist. So he always just shared his passion for art with us. And we were always doing charcoal or wood burning or clay sculptures. He always had our hands in something creative. And it wasn't until I was a little bit older that I realized that I was missing that creative spark in my life and I had really bad skin growing up and I went to cosmetology school originally planning on being an esthetician thinking that I was going to have my own spa and my own skincare line and I was going to heal people's skin and then I got into hair school and started doing color and fell in love with the chemistry of it fell back in love with formulation fell in love with the art behind creating color with people and although my canvas wasn't you know a, a picture, I, my canvas was somebody's hair, and it really did create a scratch that creative itch that was missing. So that's kind of how I fell into that. And then again, 14, 13 years ago, we didn't really have the education online or the, in, the influencers or even the educators that we have now that were doing this type of creative hair. 
I started assisting somebody that was a, um, a Sassoon artist. He was a very precision hair cutter and all of his clients were, were older women that loved that, that precise haircut, that bob, and only had gray coverage, that, those root retouches every single, every four weeks. So that's all I was doing. So I then started a path of going out on my own, trying to find these other artists that I could just learn from and, you know, traveling, whether it be New York or Miami or LA or Vegas, trying to just with my own money, just being like, Hey, can I, can I shadow you for the day? Or can I, can I pick your brain? And, you know, I'll, I'll pay for it. Just, I just want to be there, you know, and learning how to, again, hone my skills until things started getting more readily available at our fingertips and, you know, education like Krista does, things like that. So that really started my hair career. And then COVID happened and we had a, I had a lot of downtime to sit at home and really figure out what it is I wanted to do next. And I, 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 my not husband, my boyfriend at the time, whom I now husband, again, I was like talking to him about, you know, why, why not open a salon and start doing hair on my own? And it was really, really scary. But he, again, is somebody that's like, here's your safety net. I'm not going to let you fall. Let's do it. And then throughout COVID is when we built our first salon. And I opened it thinking it's, again, it's small. I opened it thinking it's just going to be me and maybe two other people um, where it's just going to be a boutique style salon. COVID kind of changed my energy to think you can't do a big salon anymore. People want to have more of like that customized one-on-one -on -one experience without a lot of people. And that's where Aloe Hair Studio was born, was the thought of me just doing something on my own and not doing a salon suite, but actually having a salon, but it being small enough where I would be able to sustain it if nobody decided to come along with me. Mm. So, and now we're here. <laughs> you are so unique. You know, it, it's very... It's very rare that you meet a dreamer and a doer. You know, most dreamers need the support of a doer. Or most doers need the support or need the vision of a dreamer, you know, and, 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 and I get the sense that you're both. Um, my partner at Hair Street, Katie, she, she's absolutely that. She's a dreamer and a doer. And I just, I appreciate um, her in my life. So I, I'm sure that everybody that's in your life is really appreciative of, of the way that you're, uh, you're navigating navigating this this space in this world and like uh krista a, a big thank you to you just thank you for uh a putting devil my radar and, and, and b thank you for the introduction because you, you're something special man you know and, and i can't wait to see like in in, in a couple years like where where, where all this kind of like lands or or, or or you know ends up you know in in, in a sense because that's pretty special pretty pretty amazing and um you know just, just congratulations to anything. Chris, you got anything? No, I mean, I said she was amazing in the beginning, and I was not, I don't lie. Don't no, lie. You didn't lie. You didn't lie. It's Thank amazing. you, guys. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here, and, um, you know, I wish I could just ask you as many questions back, but. <laughs> well, I mean, you certainly can do that. We'll be on your podcast. I'm sure that's coming soon. Coming yeah. soon, another thing to do. <laughs> you know, it was actually very funny. I actually, I did start a podcast um, ah. a little over a year ago now, and it's called Don't Cut Your Bangs. And I, it's one of those things I actually put it into, you know, how you put the name into the system. Nobody else had it. So, you know, I went with it and actually I got a cease and desist by somebody who had a very similar name to it that I didn't know existed. And at the time I was getting ready to go to Greece for the summer and I was like, I just don't have the energy to just rebrand and redo this right now. So anyway, we two, at two episodes, I, you know, I, I took a pause on it. And hopefully one day I'll be able to spark it back up. But I, I did start a podcast and it was actually very, very fun for the first two episodes. I'll tell you that. But again, it's one of those things that it needs my undivided attention. And I don't want to do it half-assed. And it, I wasn't able to give it what it needed at that time. So instead of trying to force it, I just took a step back from it. By the way, I love the name of it. Too bad it got ceased and desisted. I know. Don't cut your back. <laughs> I don't even know how that could get ceased and desisted. It's just kind of like stuff. I know. I know. It's And again, like I, I took it to a family lawyer and he's like, listen, like this doesn't really have much to stand on. But at the time I was like, you know what? I'm 
I'm getting ready to get married in Greece. Like I just don't have, I, my mind was elsewhere. So, you know, also, it's one, hopefully. Sometimes it's not worth the effort, you know, like, like, I, I mean, I will talk about it all fair, but I'll tell you my story about it as well. Deb, thank you so much. Thanks for hanging out with us. Krista, thank you for the introduction. Truly, truly appreciate it. Deb, I think we're in each other's lives here for a while. I can't wait to, uh, to like uh, meet you in the IRL. Um, as yes. They- um, that that'll be very very cool. But uh, Miss Deb, oh Deb, uh, where can people find you? Let's let's get into that, and then we'll get out of here. Okay. Well, I've got nine hundred handles now. Yes, you do. So you can find me online on Instagram at Ballet Barbie is like my professional hair account. B A L A Y like balayage and then Barbie. Um, my personal is just at Deb Todd, and then my hair salons are Allo Hair Studio A L O Allo without the E. And then Allo Blow, A L O Blow. Um, and then you can also find my websites in there as well. And I'd love to chat. That's awesome. <laughs> On my 900 handles. Yeah, I know, right? I don't even know how you manage that. I, I, I can't get to that. I can't even manage a personal account. I got, I got one account, Hair District. Come find me. Reach out to me there. Sometimes people tag me on my personal <laughs> account. I'm like, what are you doing? You're never going to find me there. I don't even open that thing. <laughs> If I forget the password, it's done. It's it's no longer a page. If I forget the <laughs> password, that's awesome. Don't even ask me my passwords. Yeah. <laughs> we could have a whole couple of things about passwords and how crazy those are. <laughs> Miss Deb Todd, thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review to listen to all the latest podcasts. Please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet and to stay connected on and off the show. You can follow us at hair Street on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Peace and love.